Ladies and gentlemen, I am back. Oh yeah, I'm back. And, you know, the reason why I kind of took a little break, because, you know, I'm still dealing with Kobe and, you know, the whole situation. And I'm not going to lie, man, like my, my love for for sports in general, not just basketball, but sports in general has kind of lowered a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm taking it hard right now. You know, Kobe was it for me. You know, Kobe was the reason why I even got into sports. And, you know, like I said, I wasn't even a sports fan at all until I watched Kobe, you know, and that kind of got me into it. That was my introduction. And so I'm still dealing with it. But, um, just that that mentality, man, that moment mentality. You got to keep going, you know. So here I am. So I purposely haven't posted any WWE videos just for this moment. You know, rather than post three separate videos about Raw or what, like what happened on Raw, NXT, and SmackDown, I've decided to just combine all three into one. Talk about all three shows. Rather than talk about every single thing that happened on the show, I'm going to boil it down and talk about the the most, you know, the mo- more important things that happened on the show. You know, WWE highlights as far as what happened on Raw, NXT, and SmackDown. And let's start off with Monday Night. Monday Night Raw. Baby. Number one. Um, first off, the highlights are from like what I think is more important to the least important, I guess you can say. Or you know, just how I rank them, I guess. Uh, starting number one, Monday Night Raw. Uh, Rhea Ripley made her return. Uh, this week was full of returns, actually. Um yeah excuse me Rhea Ripley made her raw debut it wasn't necessarily her debut because she was a part of the women's survivor series matches between raw and AC and smackdown so she was on raw a part of that you know invading you know inv- invasion but she made her like her singles career um debut and she was ch- she challenged charlotte flair for the for a title nxt women's title you know, Charlotte beforehand was doing a promo talking about, you know, you know, she's defeated Bailey thousands of times. You know, Kurt, Bailey is the current SmackDown Women's Champion. And she's defeated Becky Lynch a thousand times, who is the current Raw Women's Champion. So, like, what's next? Like, should she take that leap to NXT? Does she goes back to NXT? You know? And Rhea Ripley came out and straight up challenged her. You know? And Charlotte just walked away. Typical Charlotte, typical, you know, typical, you know, queen. She addresses things on her time, you know. So, more on that on NXT. Uh, Ruby Riot made her return, and just when you think she was gonna reunite with Liv, you know, beforehand Liv and Lana had another match, which Liv won. Um, Liv won this match and Ruby Riot made her return. And just when you think it was going to be another, you know, a Ruby, you know, Riot Squad reunion, she attacks Liv Morgan. She attacks Liv Morgan. And we shall see what transpires with this. Um, you know, Ruby back as a heel, but Liv as a baby now. So, could this lead up to a match with? You know, the former Riot Squad members at WrestleMania. More than likely on a pre-show. But whatever. Uh, Randy Orton uh, gives no explanation on why he attacked Edge. You know, he was just going back and forth with the crowd. And, you know, pretty much the crowd told the story. You know, and that's a kind of left kind of a lost arc in today's uh wwe you know some guys can't just you know connect with that crowd 
And Randy and Edge specifically for sure can just kill it as far as like playing amongst that crowd and, you know, psychologically. And Randy just left the ring and just saying that I can't do this. Kind of like um, there was literal voices in his head. You know, he's he didn't want to do it, but he did it. Guess someone told him to do it. So it's at edge. Yeah, you know, it's Randy York, man. So Um Drew McIntyre squashes Mojo Raleigh. The match itself shouldn't be on this list because it wasn't a highlight, but beforehand with his promo and even after when he won, Drew McIntyre is over, man. He is over. He's over with the crowd. He is doing something that it took literally years for Roman to do. And that's to get over. As a good guy. As a baby. So, yeah. That's that's Drew McIntyre, man. I just want to put that in there. Because of Drew, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, Becky Lynch accepts. Oscar's challenge for the Raw Women's Championship. Oscar uh, just got done defeating Natalia, I guess, I think so. And she was going on her little rant, and she challenged Becky Lynch to another match. Not satisfied with the results of the Royal Rumble, uh, she, you know, she wanted another shot at Becky, you know. And Becky, being the man. Me and the man, she's not going to turn down a fight, you know, opportunity. You know, what better way to defeat Oscar not once, but twice, you know? So, she accepted. So, is this match going to be at Super Showdown? Is it going to be next week on Raw? We shall see, you know? Um, And then, lastly, that's more important to note on this show, is the main event, the Triple Threat. Uh, match to determine Brock Lesnar's uh, challenger for Super Showdown at Saudi Arabia. It was the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, Ricochet, and Bob Lashley. Not Bobby, Bob Lashley. Honestly, I was pulling for Bob in this match because who doesn't want to see that clash? You know, just two behemoths of men, Bob and Brock. A match that people are clamoring for for years now. Bob, Brock, Brock and Bob, you know, and... I kind of had a feeling that Ricochet was going to win this match, and he did because of the story between, you know, Ricochet coming out and getting low-blowed. Brock Lesnar low-blowing someone half his size. Yep. And, you know, I knew Rollins wasn't going to win this either. You know, they had their moments, you know, Brock, you know, you know, Brock losing to Seth Rollins twice already. You know, and, you know, who who's going to be the baby in that? You know, Brock's going to be the baby. You know, Seth is a heel now. So, like, that would be just a weird thing. So, I kind of knew, wrong, you know, Ricochet was going to win this match. You know, you know, he pinned Bob, as I predicted. You know, there's no way Ron's going to pin clean in this. So, um... And then as soon, it, literally as soon as Ricochet won this match, Brock comes out and F5s Ricochet. Yeah, so Brock has been on all Raw episodes since 2020. Congrats. He was supposed to get, you know what I mean, give you a cookie, you know. What do you want, you know? Okay, cool. That's That's what you're supposed to do. Be on... Every single show. You're the WWE champion. You're supposed to be on every show. Like, what do you want me to do? Just, like, give him all these type of props? You're supposed to be on every show. You're the WWE champion. You know? 
you know, I'm enjoying it while it lasts because it ain't going to be an all-year thing. It ain't going to be every show. Just as of right now, as he's a champion because he's going to lose at a mania to Drew McIntyre. So I'm not even worried about that at all. But um, that was pretty much Monday Night Raw, man. They had, like, you know, um, Kevin Owens had a match. You know, it was him and Raiders versus AOP and Buddy. It was it was okay. Um, I think Aleister Black had another squash match. Oh, I'm I'm done with Aleister Black, man. They they don't know what to do with him, and you know, they don't care for him. Why should I care for him? Man? You know, that's just where I'm at with it. Not just with him, but everybody else on the roster that I feel like should, deserves more. And I'm gonna get into that on SmackDown when I get to it. Um, but that was pretty much Monday Raw, man. I forgot where they were, but, um, yeah, that was Monday Night Raw. Moving forward to Wednesday night, NXT. NXT is just where it's set as far as, like, pure wrestling, like, that gets you out of your seat, you know? Um, you have, you know, you, you have... Those matches on Raw and SmackDown occasionally. I'm talking about like every week, just hard hitting matches that just pumps you up, man. You know, um, like I said, this is the week of return. So the Velveteen Dream returned when the Undisputed Era, um, you know, in the main event, it was the Broser weights of Matt Riddle and Pete Dunn and Tommaso Ciampa going up against the Undisputed Era of Cole, uh, Fish, and O'Reilly. And Strong was, you know, alongside, you know, at um, Barricade. But, um, you know, just when, you know, the Broser weights and Ciampa was going to win this match. Done, you know, not done, but um, Strong came in and you know had the disqualification and beating down Tommaso. And just when you thought they were just going to beat down Tommaso to end the show, the Velveteen Dream returns and knocks all other members off. Knocks all other members of the Undisputed Era off. Leaving them scrambling. This is just a bad time for the Undisputed Era, man. Since 2020, really, you know, yes, the privacy was here. All four members were champions. and But it's just as soon as Strong lost, lost it to Keith Lee, THE Keith Lee, they haven't been doing anything. It's just, just been crumbling down. You know, Strong lost the title. Then soon after, they lost to Imperium at Wars Collide. Now, they're getting beat down by the returning Velveteen Dream. And before then, they lost in the Dusty Rhodes Classic yet again. So, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um... That was at the main event. But um, Charlotte made her return. See what I'm saying? This, this, this whole week was full of returns. Charlotte made her return back to NXT to challenge, to, I guess, challenge, uh, to accept the challenge by Ray Ripley. And then before that, Bianca Bell Air. Comes out, interrupts, saying that Rhea shouldn't be overthinking Bianca because Bianca and Rhea have a scheduled match for the NXT Women's Title at NXT Takeover Portland. And Belair felt like you know, she, you know, she, you know, not Rhea's not taking her seriously because she's overthinking about Charlotte and facing her mania. And. I love Becky, you know, not Becky, but Bianca Belair, man. She has the look, she has the strength, 
And to be honest, you know, she has that flair, just that attitude to be great, especially whether baby or hit. Oh. And um, I think she's going to be great, man. Um, I personally would not mind a triple threat match at WrestleMania. Rather than a Rhea Charlotte match, I would not mind Bianca, Charlotte, and Rhea at WrestleMania for the NXT Women's title. Let's have like a screwy finish at Portland or Charlotte intervenes purposefully. And <laughs> let's do a triple threat. I'll be down with it. As long as Charlotte don't win. As long as Charlotte don't win, I'm cool. Because Bianca has been showing her tail off for a while now. And she put the entire WWE Universe on notice at the Royal Rumble. She eliminated like eight women. And she lasted like at least, what, 30 Two thirty-three minutes in the rumble herself. She eliminated Bliss to top it all off. You know. Um, so yeah, man. Bianca Belair. She's it for me. She is it for me. Just to let you know. Yeah. Um later in the show it was Finn Bala and Johnny Gargano um uh, segment. You know, both of them were kind of via via satellite, and one of the best promos I've seen in a while. You know, um, what NXT is doing with Finn Balor is like the greatest thing he's ever done since he's been in the WWE. You know, even his first stint in NXT, you know, Raw and SmackDown. What they are doing with Finn right now is the greatest thing legit ever since he walked into WWE. You know, the Prince and just his heelish tactics, his the look. Man, Finn is it right now. And to have him going up against Johnny Gargano is just... That's just give them at least 20 to 25, maybe even 30. Just heaven on earth. Heaven on earth as far as wrestling. Um, in this segment, you know, in this promo, even, you know, it was, you know, Finn was going back and forth with Johnny, you know, that Johnny isn't it. You know, he's just, he was just a placeholder until Finn decided to come back, you know, and. He couldn't lace Johnny. He couldn't lace uh, Finn's shoes. And Johnny fired back, you know, talking about, you know, he wants Finn at Wrestle, you know, at, at, at TakeOver. He doesn't want the Finn that was on Raw and SmackDown losing the, the Bob Lashley over and over and over again and just jobbing. And that's true. You know what I'm saying? He, Finn wasn't doing nothing on the main roster at all. Just getting squashed, jobbing, and yeah. So this this is gonna be a great match, man. NXT Portland is gonna be a phenomenal show. Rhea, um, Rhea, Bianca for the NXT Women's Title, um, Johnny, Finn, um, Adam Cole, and Tommaso. For the NXT women, NXT title, so it's shaping up to be a good show. It's shaping up to be a good show, and as far as the matches on NXT, um, I really like the the Jordan Devlin Tyler Tyler Breeze match. I really like that. Love that match. You know, like I said in you know a previous video, um, I love the fact that WWE put the cruiserweight title. In NXT, 
And now that an NXT UK competitor, Jordan Devlin, is the champion, it can go cross over up there and show the talents that's going on out there, you know, in the Cruiserweight division. And even the Cruiserweights in NXT, you know, you got Leo Rush, you got Tyler Breeze, you got um, uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Even in NXT, Travis Banks and, you know, um, Eddie Dennis even. Um, maybe not in it, Eddie Dennis, but um, I don't really know that much. Too many competitors out there outside of Devlin. Or oh, Tyler Bay could even be in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so much talent that was floundering. And now that the Cruiserweight title is on NXT, so many guys can just flourish and and show this and show themselves. So um, I really love this match. You know, I love the fact that Tyler Breeze went back to NXT. Talking about somebody else that wasn't doing anything on the main roster. I think that should be legit a thing. If you're not doing anything on Raw SmackDown, go back to NXT. Uh, repackage yourself. Reinvent yourself. Um, like a Finn Balor, like a Tyler Breeze, uh, you know, Fandango even. Um, yeah, I love it. I love it, man. I love it. Um, that was pretty much NXT. Um, Killian Dane and Dragovich had a match. Um, I think that's his name. Dimitri or Dominic Dragovich, something like that. A guy that he's he's going to face uh, Keith Lee for NXT North American title at Portland as well. So, little match, you know, just get him, get him over, just get him over. But um, NXT was great. NXT was uh, phenomenal, you know. And um, I think Angel Garza had a match with Swerve Scott as well. Um, solid, you know. NXT always pops me, you know. So that was NXT, man. Uh, moving on to Friday Night SmackDown. SmackDown. Goldberg, Goldberg, Goldberg made his return and challenges. He has the gall, the guts to challenge the fiend at Super Showdown. And Bray Wyatt accepts. He says that the fiend accepts. And this is going to be a good match. It's going to be a solid match. Uh, my only risk with Goldberg is that he, he he botches. He botches, man. He botches. And, you know, that's my only thing with him. You know, I love Goldberg. You know, for a while I've been calling him Oberg because of the fact that he uses all of his energy. You know, coming down to the ring and then gases out once the match starts. You know, but, yeah, you know, I'm giving him one more chance. You know, the SummerSlam thing with Ziggler, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. This is my, this is my last chance for him. This is his last opportunity to prove me wrong. Absolute legend. I love Goldberg. But I gotta be honest. This is my his is his last chance to prove me wrong. If he botches again, I'm done. Done. Bray Wyatt the Fiend versus Goldberg for the universal title at Super Showdown. So yeah. The return, see, see what I'm saying? The return, the, this is a week of returns. Ruby Riot, Velveteen Dream, Goldberg, and the return of the Duck Sheet. Miz and Morrison. This is just so good. Entertainment, funny, man. Miz and Morrison had um, a match last week to determine who will face um, 
who would be the next contenders for the New Day's titles. And um, Miz and Morrison won. So at Super Showdown, it would be the Miz and the Morrison versus the New Day. Uh, Kofi Kingston and um, Big E. Big E. And New Day. Um, the New Day comes out and interrupts. Saying that they were just pretty much laugh, laughing off the thought, the thought of Miz and Morrison dethroning them from the tag titles. And Miz and Morrison pretty much saying like they defeated every tag team on SmackDown to prove themselves worthy of a shot. And then all of a sudden, the ooh so comes out. Jimmy and Jay, Jay and Jimmy comes out and says, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys have not defeated every single team because you haven't defeated us. And then all of a sudden, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Rude, not Bobby, Robert Rude comes out. And Ms. Morrison, with that distraction, beat down the New Day. And just left out like, as heels like they are. And that leads to a match between the Usos and Ziggler and Rude. Solid match. Um, Usos, any match Usos is in and Ziggler is in, I'm going to like. I've always loved Dolph Ziggler, baby or heel. Uh, this was a solid match. It was a good match. Obviously, this match had a little history, obviously, with King Corbin and... Um, Roman Reigns, who I'm going to talk about in a minute, but um, this is a good match. It was a solid match. Um, I would love to see Usos as champion soon, soon, sooner or later. You know, um, I would rather see Rude as an individual, not singles competition, rather than tag team. That's just me. And anything that Dolph Ziggler does is money. Um. He's going he gonna sell his tail off. That's just who he is. But um solid match. Um the only reason this was in my highlight as far as Sheamus and Paula Cruz, which was a squash match. Squash. Paula Cruz, blue chip. Has the strength, the dur- dur- durability. The look, the charisma. Jobs. Jobs. To Sheamus. I love Shamo. But really? Really? Sheamus takes down Cruz. And then Shorty G, Chad Gable, comes out and tries to save him. And guess what? I forgot Sheamus is he kicked Shorty G Chad Gable beats him down easy this new Sheamus is just great you know he's he should be in line for Intercontinental title match sooner or later um I feel like that should be the match between him and Braun at WrestleMania, in my opinion, you know. Um, and speaking of Braun, he's not on my list because he gets beat down by the Revival and Shinsuke Nakamura and Sami Zayn. Another group of people that I feel like deserves so much more. Uh, the Revival definitely needs to go back to NXT. Zayn could go back to NXT and benefit. Nakamura can go back and see and benefit. Imagine that. Nakamura, Adam Cole, Nakamura, Pete Dunn, Nakamura, Velveteen Dream. Oh, oh my God. Sami Zayn, even. Sami Zayn and Dunn. Sami Zayn and Keith Lee. Oh my God. 
Wow. Revival. Undisputed Era. Revival. Bros. Bros. Awaits. Revival. Um, Grizz and Young Vets. Revival. Imperium. Ah. Oh my God. The possibilities. But no, they aren't here doing absolutely nothing on SmackDown. Anyway, Reigns, you know, Corbin was coming out and pretty much being on the disrespectful thing. And he put, he dropped a cup of liquid. I don't know what it was on a fan. And just the most disrespectful thing you can do towards a fan. But uh, Reigns come down, beats him down. And Reigns challenged him to a cage match. Either I think it was next week or a Super Showdown. Um, this better be their final match. I hope and pray that it's their final match. And hopefully this leads to Reigns and Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Um, I think they're going to be like an elimination chamber and Reigns wins it again, yet again. Just like he did last time. Um, I think the face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title when he was on Raw. You know. Because I don't see anybody that can have that marquee match with the Fiend at WrestleMania other than Reigns. You know, I mean, you got King Corbin, but he's a heel. Um, Sheamus, I don't think he's ready just yet to just get thrown into Universal Championship pictures just yet. Um, could you have that Intercontinental Championship? Intercontinental Champion versus Universal Champion. Marquis, you know, Fiend and Bray. Uh, um, you could could have had Shinsuke unless um, if you really actually build him up and not actually take him as a joke. And built them up and booked them correctly. He could have had that match. Shinsuke and The Fiend. Um, Sami Zayn even. Um, so many possibilities. But obviously, you don't book Reigns in that position. Because he's the only one that you actually care for. It's all good. You know. But um, I love Reigns. It's just, you know, there's more people on the roster than Roman Reigns. That could be world champion material. But, uh, and Daniel Bryan is... I don't know what Daniel Bryan... I don't know what what's the deal with Daniel Bryan. He had a squash match against Heath Slater. Um, but it was good he sees... Uh, you know, it was good he sees Heath Slater, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, that was SmackDown. That was pretty much SmackDown, man. Um, okay, show... Leading towards the build to a super showdown, and of course, and of course, um, WrestleMania. So, um, this was the week of WWE highlights. This is the new thing that I'm doing now, rather than do three individual videos. Of all three shows, I am combining all three in one. That would be less work for me to do. And just be more... Yeah, with this video. Um, Yeah, this was the WWE highlight show of the week. I guess I'm going to name it that. I don't know just yet. But um, this is WWE. Uh, I'm still going to do like pre-shows, review shows for like pay-per-views and whatnot. But as far as like weekly episodic shows such as a Raw, a SmackDown, and NXT, I'm combining them all in one. So you're welcome. A little pat on the back for myself for thinking of this. And uh, until next week's week full of highlight show. Yes, sir.